Sierra Leone, people keep talking about Bruno, this legend, uh, this mysterious character, this kind of monster in the forest. But for me, he was really, he was more like my son. I met him in a small village called Matatoka. He was tied to a tree, dehydrated, almost dying. They said, well, the mother was shot. He was brought into the village like a couple of weeks earlier. I was thinking he was just another monkey. I decided to help him, so I actually purchased Bruno for $20 and uh, without knowing what I was getting into. If he was in the wild, he would have uh, depended on his mother so much. Baby chimps are looked after by their mothers even when they're up to four or five years old. My wife and I are parents. I mean, it's like his father and mother. I think probably sometimes he looked at us as maybe chimps, or maybe he looked at it himself as a human. We don't know which way, but the bond was there. It was so strong. He was extremely intelligent. Things you wouldn't imagine that he could do in the house. And just by looking and learning, he learned skills. He knew where to go, what to get, how to get everything. He taught himself even to flush the toilets after going for a week. So he was trying to adapt to our environment. Sure, he liked the good life. Um, anything he needed was there. It's not like in the bush, he had to go look for things. If he screams and shouts, we need to give him anything he wants so that we can calm him down. And uh, he really capitalized on that. He really used to like have us around his finger. He needed to get out, he needs to break things, he needs to climb. Uh, so all this became a problem because we were living in the middle of the city. What is his future? What do we do with him? Then I came across another chimp, Julie, then Little, there's Philip, Charlie, so I started rescuing many chimps and I ended up looking after eight chimpanzees in my house. Um, what do we do with that? I was an accountant, I didn't even think along those lines that I'm going to start a sanctuary. I was, to be very frank, running away from the problem, passing the bucket to someone else. So we sold the idea to the European Union at that time, and they were able to give us some seed money, maybe with the condition that, since I had so much inspiration about this, that I have to run the project for the first year before I hand over or whatever. So I turned around from my career being an accountant and became the founder of Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary, and uh, that is how the whole thing started. Bruno was an extraordinary big chimp. An adult male chimp would weigh around 45, 50 kilos. Uh, Bruno was touching around 70 kilos. He was huge, big, probably something to do with his upbringing also. He had all the good food, good nutrition, everything from the beginning. So he was one of those guys, he was a little bit bigger than the rest of them. But he also had a big heart. He will always support the weaker side. Always. I mean, if there is a chimp being punished by other chimps, he will always take that side. He won't gang up with the others, try to show off he's the alpha male. He always protected. When he gives you a hug, it's basically you're out of breath. You can't breathe. He pulls you so tight and it's just a, the, the bloody grill between you and him. And he will squeeze you so much. And sometimes he's, uh, he will open his mouth and part of your head will be inside his mouth. And that's the kind of hug he gives you. It's, it's a beautiful feeling when you have that with him. He was very protective about me, loved him, loved me too much. But at the same time, I also realized that 
he was growing up and he's becoming a leader within his group, within his own kind. And uh, probably it was wrong for me to push myself there because I don't think I, I belong to that equation. He would always call me to come in and stay with him, but I wouldn't do it because I thought it's not good for him. Come on. I know that he used to sulk for days because I didn't respond to his call. So sometimes it has been hard decisions, but they had to be made. Bruno was a star. I mean, everybody liked him. I mean, people knew that he was big and he was boisterous and he would show off and all that. But they also knew that he was an interesting character. If you are going there with your partner, Bruno goes jealous. He will direct his finger to you to move from the, from the woman. And you will start him hearing, who, 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 shouting like that, who. If you refuse, he picks something from the floor or he messes on his hand and throws it on you. Bruno is something like a chief among the other chimps because they respected Bruno. Uh, I don't know how to talk more, but Bruno is a very, very useful chimp. Um, Bruno was brilliant. Um, Bruno was very robust. Um, Bruno was a national legend. Bruno don't go to forest. You want to live with your own family. You know no, they can't we get. Bruno to you know come they can't back. Get. We want Bruno to come back. Come on. We, we want Bruno. We are working with an extremely intelligent species. Some of the chimps, I think, over the years, they've been carefully watching the locking mechanisms on our service gates and slides. It is only after the escape incident we realized that uh, they've been using a lot of tools to dig out one of the timber frames which was holding one of the slides, and also we saw a big rock and a broken padlock. I know what happened was it was an accident, and I know that uh, as a chimp, he needed to defend his group. And that's what he did. It was humans, it was our fault to go and bring these chimps into our midst and keep them in towns and um, villages. Every single chimp at Takugama, the mother was killed by a human. Shot and in front of the eyes, they were taken away from the mother. This is something we can't forget. And I don't think uh, we are intelligent enough to say they would have forgotten about that. Maybe they remember that. We have looked after him and I think we've cared for them and we feel that he was very comfortable, but again, we never know, we cannot speak for them. Once he got out and started feeling that freedom, um, probably he chose, maybe he thought, maybe this is what I want. At the age of five, six years, baby chimps begin to go away from their mothers. Yeah. That's the time they begin to go and visit friends. Just like you do. Bruno inspired me to do this, but the work is not finished. I don't think a, a day passes without I thinking about him. Uh, in fact, even when I'm simply as driving up to Takugama, I think is anything moved or a little shadow or it can be a kind of a termite mound in the bush or something, anything look like a silhouette or looking like someone sitting, I'm always stopping, coming down, having a look. It is always with the hope, one day he's turning up. One day, after we done all the homework, educating everyone, we may be able to find uh, a viable place where the chimps from Takugama can be reintroduced. The future we thought he would have, I think he's already having it, and I think um, that's a very satisfying way of looking at it. And that's the way I deal with this problem of the whole Bruno thing, Bruno going away. He is where he should be. He shouldn't have been taken out of that forest. I know these chimps, we have no business humans going to get them out of that place. My eldest son uh, is slowly getting into a, a teenager now. So one day he has to leave home. And I think that's the way I feel about Bruno actually, you know. 
you give them everything, you keep them with you, you think they are happy, but they are, you know, once they want to become adults and they want to go away, I think you have to let it go. And that's what happened.